square root of 50 is 5 root 2, and square root of 18 is 3 root 2. In this inequality, we group the terms involving x on the left side. To solve the inequality, we divide by 5 root 2 minus 6. Since the denominator contains a square root, we need to rationalize it. We multiply both numerator and denominator by conjugate of the denominator, which is 5 root 2 plus 6. The numerator becomes 25 root 2 plus 30 plus 30 plus 18 root 2. And the denominator simplifies to 14. Simplifying further, we get the solution. X is greater than 60 plus 43 root 2 divided by 14. In this question, we are expanding 1 plus ax raised to the power n. The second term is n ax, and the third term is n times n minus 1 over 2 times a squared x squared. Now, we compare this with the given expression. The coefficient of x is negative 1 over 3, and the coefficient of x squared is 5 over 36. From the first comparison, we know that n times a equals negative 1 over 3. Thus, a squared equals 1 over 9 n squared. Substituting this into the equation for the coefficient of x squared, we get n times n minus 1 over 2 times 1 over 9 n squared equals 5 over 36. Simplifying this equation, we find that n equals negative 2 over 3. Now, we substitute n equals negative 2 over 3 into the first equation. Negative 2 over 3 a equals negative 1 over 3. Thus, a equals 1 over 2. Moving on to part b, the coefficient of x cubed is n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 over 1 times 2 times 3 times a cubed. Substituting n equals negative 2 thirds and a equals 1 half in the expression, we find that the coefficient of x cubed is negative 5 over 81. In this question, we use formula for the area of a triangle. Half times, x times, x plus 7 times, sine 30 equals 36. Since sine 30 is half, we multiply both sides of the equation by 4. Simplifying gives us the quadratic equation. x squared plus 7x minus 144 equals 0. We factor it as x plus 16 times, x minus 9 equals 0. Since the length is always positive, we take x minus 9 equals 0, so x equals 9. The length of AB and AC are 9 and 16 respectively. To find the length of side BC, we use the cosine rule. BC equals square root of 9 squared plus 16 squared minus 2 times 9 times 16 times cosine 30. Simplifying this gives BC equals 9.36. Next, for part C, we will find the smaller angle, ACB, using the sine rule. Sine angle ACB over 9 equals sine 30 over 9.36. Taking the inverse sine gives, angle ACB equals sine inverse of sine 30 over 9.36 times 9th. So, angle ACB approximately equals 28.7 degrees. Finally, to find angle ABC, we subtract the sum of the two other angles from 180. Angle ABC is 121.3 degrees. The arc length of a sector, r theta, equals 21 minus r. The area of sector is half r squared theta. Since r theta equals 21 minus r, we get area equals r over 2 times 21 minus r. Now for part B, we want the area r over 2 times 21 minus r to be greater than or equal to 27. We simplify the inequality to get the quadratic inequality. Negative r squared plus 21r minus 54 is greater than or equal to 0. To make easier to solve, we multiply by negative 1, which flips the inequality. We factor the quadratic r minus 3 times r minus 18. This tells us that r is me between 3 and 18, including the endpoints. Now moving on, we express theta in terms of r. Since r theta is 21 minus r, theta equals 21 over r minus 1. 
as the value of r increases, the value of theta decreases. When r equals 3, theta equals 6, which is the maximum value. When r equals 18, theta equals 1 over 6, which is the minimum value. Therefore, theta lies between 1 over 6 and 6. The formula for the sum to first 10 terms of an arithmetic sequence is 10 over 2 times 2 a plus 9d. This sum equals 36k plus 1. So, 10a plus 45d equals 36k plus 1. This is the first equation. The sixth term, a plus 5d, equals 4k plus 1. Multiplying this equation by 9 to align with the first equation, we get 9a plus 45d equals 36k plus 9. Subtract this equation from the first equation, we get a equals negative 8. So, the first term is negative 8. We substitute a equals negative 8 into the formula for sixth term. Simplifying, d equals 4, k plus 9 over 5. Next, for part b, the fourth term, a plus 3d, is 7. Substituting a equals negative 8, we get d equals 5. To find k, we substitute d equals 5 and a equals negative 8 into the equation for the sixth term. Simplifying, k equals 4. Now, for part c, the sum of the first n terms is equals to 5 times the n plus 10th term, which is a plus n plus 9d plus 105. We multiply the equation by 2 and substitute the corresponding value of a and d. Simplifying this gives the quadratic equation 5n squared minus 71n minus 580 equals 0. We use the quadratic formula to solve for n, and we have two values for n. Since n must be a positive integer, the number of terms n is 20. To find the distance between points a and b, we start by calculating the distance when t equals 0. Since sine 0 is 0, the distance at t equals 0 is simply 2. Next, we find the distance when t equals pi over 6. We know that sine pi over 2 is 1. The distance is e to the pi over 3 plus 2. The difference is e to the pi over 3, which represents the distance between points a and b. To find the velocity, we differentiate the distance function with respect to t. Using the product rule, ds over dt equals 2 times e to the 2t times sine 3t plus 3 times e to the 2t times cosine 3t. We then evaluate the velocity at t equals pi over 3. Since sine pi equals 0, the first term disappears. Also, cosine pi is negative 1. So, the velocity at t equals pi over 3 is negative 3 times e to the 2 pi over 3. To sketch the graph of this logarithmic function, we first find the intercepts and asymptote. When y equals 0, the logarithmic function is 0. This happens when x plus 4 equals 1. And solving this, x equals negative 3. So x-intercept is negative 3. When x equals 0, y equals negative logarithm base 4 of 4 equals negative 1. So the y-intercept is negative 1. In logarithmic function, the argument must be positive, meaning x must be greater than negative 4. Therefore, the vertical asymptote is x equals negative 4. The function is decreasing, and the graph never touches x equals negative 4. It also passes through negative 3 on the x-axis and negative 1 on the y-axis. Next, in part b, 256 is 4 raised to the power 4. Using the power rule, the power can be written as the multiplier. 4 times log base x plus 4 of 4 can be written as 4 over log base 4 of x plus 4. Consider log base 4 of x plus 4 is a. We have 4 over a minus a equals 0. Solving for a, we get a equals plus or minus 2, meaning log base 4 of x plus 4 equals 2, or negative 2. In exponent form, x plus 4 equals 4 squared, or 4 to the negative 2. Solving for x, we get x equals 12, or negative 63 over 16.
In this question, vector AB equals the sum of vectors AD, DC, and CB. So, vector AB equals 2A minus 2B. It is given that vector BX equals K times vector BD. So, vector BX equals 3KA plus 2KB. Vector BX can also be expressed as the sum of vectors BC and CX. Since CX lies along the line CA, we can express it as lambda times vector CA. Substituting the corresponding values, vector BX equals 3A plus 2 lambda B minus 5 lambda A. Factoring out A and compare this expression with 3KA plus 2KB. We equate the coefficients of B and we get K equals lambda. We equate the coefficients of A, 3K equals 3 minus 5 lambda. Since K equals lambda, K equals 3 over 8. This means the ratio of BX to BD is 3 is to 5. The triangle BXC and triangle AXD are similar triangles, as the corresponding angles are the same. So the ratio of the sides of smaller triangle to the larger triangle is 3 is to 5. We know that the ratio of their areas is the square of the ratio of the corresponding sides. So, the ratio of the areas is 9 is to 25. Triangle CXB and triangle CXD have the same height, so the ratio of the areas is the same as the ratio of the bases. The area of the triangle CXD is 5 over 3 times area of triangle CXB, which gives 15 square units. By similar reasoning, we find the area of triangle AXB is also 15 square units. The total area of trapezium is 64 unit square. The ratio of the area of triangle CXD to area of the trapezium ABCD is 15 is to 64. In this question, sketching helps a lot. On line K, there are two points, A and B. Point B is 5 units up and 10 units right from point A. The gradient is 1 over 2. Using the point-slope form of a line, we can find the equation of the line K. The equation of the line K is y minus 3 equals 1 half times x plus 4. Simplifying, we get y equals half x plus 5. The ratio of the line segment AC to CB is 4 is to 1. This means C is 4 units up and 10 units right from point A. So the coordinates of point C are 4, 7. The line L is perpendicular to the line K. So the gradient of line L is negative 2. Since point C and D are on the line, the gradient of CD Q minus 7 over P minus 4 is negative 2. Therefore, Q minus 7 equals negative 2 times P minus 4. Using the distance formula, CD squared equals P minus 4 squared plus Q minus 7 squared. The length of CD is 8 root 5. So, CD squared is 320. And substituting Q minus 7 equals negative 2 times P minus 4 into this equation gives 320 equals 5 times P minus 4 squared. Divide both sides by 5. And taking square root, we get P minus 4 equals plus or minus 8. Since p is less than 0, we take p minus 4 equals negative 8. Thus, p equals negative 4. Since p minus 4 equals negative 8, q minus 7 equals 16, and q equals 23. So, the coordinates of point D are negative 4, 23. Since points A and D have the same x-coordinates, negative 4, AD is on the same vertical line. The area of the triangle ACD is calculated by half times base, which is 23 minus 3, times height, which is the horizontal distance from AD to point C. The area of triangle ACD is 80 square units. In this question, the sum of the roots is negative K over 2, and their products is 2. We need to find alpha minus beta squared, which will be used later. By using the identity and substituting values, we know alpha minus beta squared equals k squared minus 32 over 4. We are also given that alpha squared minus beta squared, which can be written as alpha plus beta times alpha minus beta, equals 7 root 17 over 4. Squaring both sides, we have alpha plus beta squared times 
alpha minus beta squared equals 833 over 16. Substituting the corresponding values, we get k squared over 4 times, k squared minus 32 over 4 equals 833 over 16. Multiplying both sides by 16, k to the 4 minus 32, k squared minus 833 equals 0. k squared can be calculated by using the quadratic formula, which gives two values, 49 or negative 17. Square of a real number must be positive, so k squared is 49, and since k is less than 0, k equals negative 7. Moving on to part b, we need to form a quadratic equation with two given roots. Since k equals negative 7, alpha plus beta is 7 over 2. The product of the two roots is 7 root 17 over 4. Alpha plus beta is 7 over 2. So, alpha minus beta equals root 17 over 2. The new quadratic equation with the given roots is x squared minus the sum of the two roots, which is 7 plus root 17 over 2 times x, plus the product of the two roots, which is 7 root 17 over 4 equals 0. In this question, we need to prove two trigonometric expressions are the same. We start from multiplying the two brackets and then simplifying the terms. We have 3 times cos theta sine theta plus 2 cos squared theta minus 2 sine squared theta. Alternatively, we have the expression 3 over 2 times sine 2 theta plus 2 cos 2 theta. From trigonometric identities, sine 2 theta equals 2 sine theta cos theta and cos 2 theta equals cos squared theta minus sine squared theta. Simplifying the expression gives 3 sine theta cos theta plus 2 cos squared theta minus 2 sine squared theta. These expressions are identical, and we finish the proof. Moving on to part b, f of theta plus 2 is the same as 3 cos theta sine theta plus 2 cos squared theta minus 2 sine squared theta plus 2 equals 0. We use negative sine squared theta plus 1 equals cos squared theta to simplify the equation. 3 cos theta sine theta plus 4 cos squared theta equals 0. Factoring out cos theta, and we have two conditions. Cos theta equals 0, which results in theta equals pi over 2, the smallest positive value for theta. 3 sine theta plus 4 cos theta equals 0 from which we have tangent theta equals negative 4 over 3. We can calculate the theta from this equation, but the smallest positive value will be greater than pi over 2. So, a equals pi over 2. Moving on to part c, the shaded region is calculated by the integral of f of theta plus 2 with respect to theta between the limits 0 and pi over 2. Integration gives negative 3 over 4 cos 2 theta plus sine 2 theta plus 2 theta. Substituting the limits and solving the expression, we have the final result. 3 over 2 plus 2 pi, which represents the area of the shaded region.